I remember, I don't remember a lot about primary school, but mm -hmm. I really remember we used to have to go and stand at her desk to read. Mm -hmm. Don't remember how often. Yeah. But one of the things, one day, I was standing reading my book and I couldn't read a word. Mm -hmm. Well, I could read some words, but not a particular word. And I um, had to stand and she let me stand and stand and stand because I couldn't read the word twilight and I thought God, that's a really hard word mm. you know she shouldn't be making me stand all mm. this time and that made me quite angry and when I was yeah. 11 I was in Mr Stott's class yes. and he was a lovely man mm. very patient still got the red ink but mm. um, he did two things he let us choose our own topics mm. for research so I did a history topic on transport and I did mm. something like the Bridgewater Canal or something really because I'm interested in bridges and right. structures and things and he let us do some science experiments mm. and that was it um, so I got a job in this place in asbestos research mm. department mm -hmm. as a laboratory assistant and that was quite interesting because asbestos research department employed mainly men as science industry quite often did. Um, so I was I was 16 working with all these men who thought I should just make the tea but then they gave me other things to do. I had to do quantitative titrations and things and they gave me my own little project. But I also had to go down on the plant because they just got a new uh, plant up and running. Um, it was supposed to be a dust free asbestos um, process mm -hmm. which is quite interesting because on the plant, the men had to do the anical analytical analysis yeah. analysis of, of all the chemicals to check that there was no burnable stuff going through into the asbestos product. Yes. That was fascinating because they quite often fiddled their results and didn't understand that actually this was important and practical. Um, Clued at that time had got this idea about personalised learning in, in science. Mm. I don't know if you heard about that, but they were into individual worksheets, workbooks. Mm. And the years three to five had study guides that mm. Terry Gibson wrote for them. Mm. And the years one and two, so seven and eight, they'd been there, yeah. um, had little topic books that I used to write for them. There were some in existence, mm. but because it was developing, mm. I was able to write some of these, mm. these things. So I had my... Um, my classes would come in and I taught a lot of first, second and third years mm. and Terry Gibson took a lot of years three, four and five because he was better to be fair. Mm. And um, that was quite, it was, it was really great for me. I loved the topic books. I loved the fact that children worked through at their own pace yes. and they had trays of equipment. So when, it, when they got to a practical piece of work, they got the tray out and if somebody else happened to be at the same place, they'd work together on it. Oh, right, so there was opportunities for... Uh, there was, but I'm not sure whether it was supposed to work like that, but <laughs> but it, it wasn't meant to be like that. It was meant yeah. to be me helping them alongside. Mm -hmm. But my, my class would just come in, get their topic books out, start, mm -hmm. no fuss, no, no starter, no. Mm -hmm. I sometimes, towards the end of a topic, or if I was introducing a topic, we'd have a, a start together. Mm -hmm. But... Other than that, it was all very calm, very relaxed. Um, they put their hand up and I'd trot over and mm. help them. And I used to say to them, well, come on, tell me what you don't understand. And I think it was, I was being a facilitator. Mm. Mm. I think we've got to be very careful about what the practical work's for. Mm. And it isn't just to give them a rest from, um, let's, they come to us in science and they say, oh, we love science because it, gives us a break from, we don't have to sit and listen all the time, we can do practical stuff. Yes. I love giving them practical stuff, it's what I, you know, I, I believe absolutely that they should be doing practical yeah. stuff. For two reasons, they need to understand why we're doing it that way, Yes. so they need to learn the process of, of for example, getting um, children to raise questions, mm. which they're not always good at, particularly not investigative questions. Mm. And we also need to get them to raise questions to, to develop their own subject knowledge. But yeah. if we're just doing 
an activity because it's a fun activity. I hate the F word. You know, mm. The students say, oh, that was fantastic, we had great fun. Yes, but what did you learn from yeah. it? Mm -hmm. I'm now working mainly on Teach First programme. Yeah. And I think the Teach First programme is absolutely amazing. The best thing I've ever done. Goodness. For me, it hits all the right um, buttons. Do you know much about the Teach First programme? A little bit. These people, um, it's growing, it's expanding a little yeah. bit. But basically they are uh, well qualified youngsters. Not They're not, there's not a lot of mature, although there are a few who might have been in, in work for a few years yeah. in their career yeah. changes. But these people come in, um, really rigorous selection, but they come in with a vision. And they come in and they do um, a certain amount of six weeks of intensive training. Yes. Four weeks here, two weeks um, at the National yeah. Institute. And that stuff is carefully planned and tailored to give them what they need. Mm. But in September, they go into their schools, the majority of them anyway. They have their own classes. They, they're not sitting with someone else, they, they haven't got a co-teacher, although some of them do, mm. and that it doesn't work out well for some people. But they've got this vision for their class, they, they know it's going to be hard work, mm. they've got a mindset of, well I don't know everything but I'm going to learn it as I go along. Uh, they go in, 1st of September, into their class, they've got total responsibility mm. for 60% of the time, and they're supported in that. Mm. But the children see them as their teacher. Mm. And I think that's got a lot to, lot to commend it. But coupled with that, they have assignments because they do their PGCE alongside their yeah. training. They've got carefully um, managed, carefully managed, carefully designed mm. assignments mm. that they do at particular times through the year. So they did an assignment a little while ago on behaviour management. Mm. Initially, they did one on the context of their school in its um, local community, environment, yeah. in its community. Um, at the moment, they're critiquing a scheme of work that they've been involved with. Mm. And they have to think about learning theories and see how their learning theory, how their learning theories have influenced mm. the scheme of work. Mm. Well, actually, for from, from many of them, they're teaching the scheme of work and then they're reading about the learning theories and then they're reflecting on it. Mm. But the point is, that's dovetailed together so that they're facing these problems, they're learning about the theories, they're mm. thinking did this go well, they're reflecting mm. and I think um, the Teach First participants become outstanding because they get the right thing at the right time mm. and they can, uh, they don't always have the answers but they ask and they ask questions, mm. lots of questions and they can argue their position on things in the schools, mm. most of them, and they can get, and they can influence change in school. Yeah. But they have group placements, don't they? Or they, they, they? They go into a school as a group. They do in their, they do in their... Um, when they get a placement, it's not the, uh, that's not the case? No. Oh, right. In their regional institute, mm. in July, August, July, mm. they did go into school as a group yeah. here, I went out, yeah. I went in, I took them into a transition day, primary, mm -hmm. into a transition day at Hive Bay, and they planned activities for um, nursery, reception, year one children, mm -hmm. and we had a shared experience. Mm -hmm. But when they go into school in September, they have their own class in yeah. their placement school, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the other one is on her own, and the one who's on her own is finding it most dif difficult. And she's also finding it most difficult, not because she isn't capable, because she's absolutely fantastic, but because she's sitting with somebody else mm -hmm. and they share a class. And she's not, the children are not looking to her as the teacher. She doesn't have the status. Another, another thing, last year I had a, a Teach First participant who was in absolutely dire straits. Mm -hmm. um, she, w it, was, it was a very late placement, um, she went into school in, in September and the, the whole thing was totally hostile. 
and she was obviously bright and enthusiastic and wanted to do things her way. Mm. She was put with a, a teacher who was responsible for the class, who, who was on um, performance related mm. yeah. pairs, um, wouldn't let my participant have any sort of success at all. Um, to cut a long story short, my participant was determined to stay because she wanted to be with her children and make a difference to her children. Mm -hmm. And we had to take her out eventually. Um, she, she was, the school, her original school said she was a failure virtually the whole way through. Mm. They agreed to let her through as a pass in, at the end of May. She went to her new school where she still is now. And by the end of July, she was an outstanding participant. Mm. And she's going on to be, to do amazing things in her new school. And I think that's probably a significant thing for me.